Greetings, unsettled souls. Go! Sam Beganji, welcoming you to the correct views. Uh, it has been brought to my attention the lighting issues. I, again, this show went from about to do nothing to getting uh, becoming a paid contributor to Opera News it, it, literally overnight. I have gear actually that I've, I'm ordering that's going to be sent here. Uh, I can highlight me and then I can highlight the screen. But it's very hard for me to highlight both with the camera that I have now. That is, fortunately, about to be changed. In the meantime, we still have all the factual news that you come for. But I just wanted to mention that it is going to be changed. I'm going to be reading this a lot uh, right off the screen. The reason for that is that I wrote it. And I think I already have it pretty concisely in written form now. And I don't want to try to re reword it for this. But I am going to be reading a bit quickly here. Because I want to get this all in in the 10 minute uh, segment allotted for this part of the show. So if I read a little faster than normal, it's not due to a lack of professionality, I can assure you. While many parts of the world are, uh, and, oh, by the way, it's called, uh, it might save your life, uh, what to do and not to do if a bomb goes off. Because now, you know, we don't have prudent leadership anymore. We don't know that we can actually count on those sorts of things. Uh, this appeared on vocal media. I'm not a real big fan of vocal media, but uh, we'll go with it. While many parts of the world throughout different eras of history have had to worry about terrorist attacks to some degree or another, and it is said that this was one of the reasons for the Crusades, it is within the last 25 years or so that the problem has reached proportions where it seems that an attack could come at any moment and at any place, regardless of where on earth they may find themselves. I wrote things like bomb explosions and car detonations are sadly not just something that happens over there or at some distant land and has been at war for centuries. Rather such, rather, such a horror could happen in any block, in any mall, at any concert, etc., etc. With that being true, the answer isn't to live in fear or have our lives closed away, quivering every time that a firecracker goes off, shuddering if a car backfires, or being afraid to enjoy one's existence, the answer isn't to allow those who spread terror to win by forcing everyone to live in terror with which they wish to blanket the whole world. Then again, to wisely combat fear, one needs knowledge. So what should a person do if they are unlucky enough to be in an area where an actual explosion, bomb, or a like attack has taken place? Well, to begin with, do not touch your eyes! This one golden command is perhaps the single most vital thing that a person can do in the event of an attack and one of the hardest to heed, particularly in the event that an explosion has dispersed agents which burn or itch the eyes. I've had that happen once. So the common human, uh, twice, the common human instinct is to put the hands to the eyes in such a situation, but in this case, such an, interest, an, an intrinsic can be the difference between sickness and recovery, life and death. This is because if the explosion is nuclear, chemical, or otherwise is dispersing harmful agents, many times those agents do not cause the sort of damage on the skin that they do once entering the body via the eyes, nose, mouth, or through other means. It is important to note that many chemicals, as well as often cancer-causing nuclear agents, once they have entered the body, can never be removed. Therefore, do not touch one's own eyes in the event of an explosion. This also means to not drink, eat, or otherwise ingest anything for any reason, even to dull what may be substantial post-explosion pain, until clear to do so by a medical professional, even if the incident took place a distance from where one may have been at the time of the attack. The importance of this cannot be overstated. Should the explosion produce a flash, a cloud, or should any time be given to prepare for shock waves and toxins carried in the air along with heat, finding a wall to crouch behind, a ditch to lie in, or finding any shelter of any kind to not can do a lot to absorb many of the toxins carried in the blast. Of course, this also works to limit the person's exposure to flying glass, metal, shrapnel, and other debris. If debris does enter the body, it is almost always best to not remove whatever it is. That is because doing so will not only likely cause a great deal of pain, often worse by far than when it entered the body, 
but the debris may be lodged in a position that, if removed, could cause a massive bleed out and death. Many people who would have otherwise made full recoveries have met their woeful ends by overlooking this wise advice, both on the battlefield I wrote and other elsewhere. Furthermore, unless the situation simply demands otherwise, uh, such as the victim is laying face down in the water, it is never wise to move someone who has been felled by an explosion, or virtually any injury for that matter. This is because it is possible that a neck or spinal cord injury could be in play, and moving the victim without training could cause further damage and pain, perhaps even paralysis. My dad was a nurse. I, I used to hear him talk about that a lot, because I was a skateboarder. He was worried I was going to kill myself. It is also important for a victim to not allow anyone to needlessly move them either. In such a situation, people may rush to one's aid and knowing no better cause lifelong damage just by trying to help. Even if the feeling seems to be lost or limited in the extremities, oftentimes these injuries do not mean that a permanent state of paralysis is a certainty. It is not uncommon at all for the feeling is to return once proper medical attention has been given to an unmoved victim. If the explosion is found to be a nuclear of some kind, which can be accomplished without a mushroom cloud if a dirty bomb, which is a regular bomb mixed with nuclear poisons which do not fission, uh, if that's been determined, the nuclear poisons, uh, which ones they, which nuclear poisons are are in the environment, needs to be ascertained as quickly as possible, as well as what finding out what levels of the nuclear threats were or are present. That said, there are a few most always certainties I called them, and that a person will want to do if the attack was thought to be involving nuclear elements. While only a doctor can be sure that any given treatment will be useful for any given person in any possible situation, bentonite clay is famous for being able to take at least some of the nuclear elements and clear them from the body. The clay also is thought to hold the elements in the body until expelled, pooped, thus preventing them from peppering their damage down the body's intestines on the way out. Having proper calcium levels will prevent some of the nuclear elements which mimic calcium from being taken into the body since the body cannot can, can, since the body can confuse deadly strontium 90 with health, healthy calcium. If that happens, it can lead to bone and other cancers. Likewise, potassium iodide will also be helpful for similar reasons as it relates to the thyroid. Concerning the moments after an explosion, it is important to remember that another human instinct also needs to be met with a bit of caution, the need to help those injured. Please listen to this. Let me know in the comment lines if you listen to this. Sadly, those who set such bombings often do so in the vilest and most nefarious ways in order to ensure the maximum number of injured or dead. In this case, it is normal, for example, to have a car bomb explode on a busy street or a marketplace, and as those who rush to help the injured nearby, or who just want to see what the commotion is, as they get close, they are met with an often bigger detonation. The second bomb is designed purposefully for this reason, and so be aware of it should the horror arise. It takes out first responders, it takes out police officers and those helping. In closing, I wrote, while there are a myriad of other things which can and should be known about how to react in the event of a terror attack of some kind, if nothing else, these basics will see a person through a lot of hardships and therefore should be called to mind, and then life should be lived. Living in fear is not living, and being armed with a few simple facts such as these can make a lot of that fear vanish, replaced by logic and the art of of preparation. Friends, if you enjoyed the show, make sure you let me know at the correct views of hotmail.com. Please leave me comments regarding it. Thank you.